Yes, uh, very excited about our uh, new ICL sizing formula. We, um, we essentially took uh, work that has already been done before on using sulcus to sulcus measurements and sulcus to sulcus lens rise to predict the volt after ICL surgery. Work done by Kojima and Doherty. Uh, but we used a higher frequency ultrasound system called the Insight, the Artemis Insight, which I have a part of having developed. Um, the image resolution is much higher, so the measurement precision is much higher, and we expected to get better control of the volt. When we did the study, of course, we also tried to find whether there were any other parameters in the posterior chamber that would help predict or better predict, improve the prediction of ICL volts post-op. To our amazement, we found that sulcus to sulcus was thrown out of the multivariate regression analysis because there, were, there was a parameter that was so highly correlated to the post-op volt of the ICL that it, it actually threw sulcus to sulcus out. So if you think of ICL sizing in terms of generationally, version one was what Star came up with, which was to measure the white to white and maybe add the anterior chamber depth and whatever. Version two was to use sulcus to sulcus. And it looks like, even though I say so myself, we've got version three now because we're using the inner ciliary body diameter as well as the lens rise as well as the scotopic pupil size as well as the lens power and when you have those four factors it looks like we have reduced the scatter of the post-op volt by a factor of four essentially making the ICL a bulletproof option. Because it is a wonderful technology, but it has very low adoption rates. When you consider that the skill set required to use it is finishing your residency in ophthalmology. Why is that not the dominant procedure in the world? I mean, the barrier to entry to LASIK is a million dollars. You have to buy a laser, a femto, an eczema, a femto. You have to take a fellowship in cornea to learn how to do LASIK. Massive barrier of entry. And yet it's 95% of vision correction. ICL 5%. You have the skill set from residency, no investment, well, maybe an ultrasound machine to do the proper sizing. And then you can do refractive surgery on pretty much anything from plus whatever to minus whatever. I believe that the, Having and I, I truly think that we've we've made a major advance in the sizing algorithm with this presentation, and hopefully a, a, a paper to come very very soon. What we've done is we've set up a website. It's free. We're not. There's no financial interest. It's called ICLsizing.com, and we have, essentially what we've done is we've copied the concept of the ASCRS calculator, where Depending on what machine you have, you enter the pre-op data on that website and then it will calculate, based on what you gave it, the volt prediction that you are entitled to based on your input. So if you have the numbers for the Kojima formula, you'll get the Kojima results. If you have the Insight Artemis Insight from ArcScan, then you'll get the version 3 formula that, we, uh, that we've obviously just uh, published. Uh, I truly believe that this is going to be a game changer for refractive surgery because crossing that sizing problem barrier is going to make the ICL like a go-to solution for most cataract surgeons who can't yet participate in refractive surgery.